Hey guys, welcome back. Again, another late video, I apologise. But here we are. And on to another new theme, so some of you may guess Star Wars. Well done. Some of you may know that it's Bad Batch. Again, well done. As you can see, started off with the inking process. Had every intention to go completely watercolour with this, like I did with all my previous. And then decided not to. I don't know why. It just... It didn't feel right going with watercolours. I don't know if it's because of how bright the colours are in Clone Wars. I don't know. But, as you can see, we've got my pencils on this one. Isn't much else to say in terms of, obviously, what I'm doing. Obviously, there is a selection of pencils that I use. I don't just use kind of give one. I have, like, about four or five different tones. So obviously use a base colour, which is obviously the colour that you want their flesh to actually be. Then you have two darker shades, so obviously for shadows, for actual like impurities and complexion in the actual skin. You have a lighter tone to get those highlights of where the actual light hits. And then you have another colour to kind of add like warmth into the skin, so it doesn't seem so two-dimensional. Normally with that, it's like a either a pink or a salmon kind of colour, or sometimes I've even used orange. Just something warm, just to get that kind of feel back into the skin. Same as with the browns, I use a warmer brown and then a cooler brown as well, obviously for the darker shadows. Now, this particular character, Hunter, he has a facial tattoo, as you can probably see with this. Using Christmas colours, obviously you can get them to have a really smooth, really nice, flat kind of look to them. With the bean face tattoo, I purposely left it quite grainy, just so you could see some of, almost like the flesh coming through. Not even a normal tattoo. Normal tattoos, they are not block colour. They do fade over time and that kind of thing. And they, kind of, they reflect light, just like skin does. It's a case of figuring out the balance, I suppose you could say. And then obviously, his hair is black and it's a difficult... Black is always a difficult one to kind of shade. Simply because you could shade it in so many different ways depending on the colours that you're using for your picture. So you could shade black with grey, which is an obvious choice. But you could also shade black with a dark like indigo blue or a, a, like a really dark purple. As you can see on the side of the face, obviously the face tattoo is black. And as you can see on the side, I've done like a purple reflection on some of the areas on the side of the face. So because I've done that on his face, I decided not to do anything like that with his hair. I just used bog standard grey. About two different tones of grey, so a darker grey and then a really pale grey. Just to kind of highlight the layers, I suppose you could say. Apologies if it seems to drift off. The screen at points it's one of the weirdest things that I just I move the page around that much it just kind of drifts off away from me but with his bandana I actually forgot there was a skull on there so you saw me just kind of quickly draw that on but I think I only use about three colors on this one so a darker red lighter red and then a pink Again, just to get that reflection at the side. And now, his helmet. This, I was 
honestly, I was going to go in, I was going to go, right, yep, I'll do this, I walk colours. No, I don't want to do the watercolours. I go straight in my pencil. I kind of looked at the big areas and planes and it was like, I ain't going to be able to go through all of this with pencil. So I got the Copics out, which is what you're seeing right now. So a few of the greys, one of the reds. I got a really pale blue out as well, just to try and pick up the reflection so I knew where that was kind of hitting on there. And then I get the Prismacolor pencils. And then I start building up on those shades and on the textures. But it was fun to do. I mean, obviously, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've done some of the other helmets before, but I mean, they were very, very tiny, quite small. So quite easier to do. You haven't got so much space of just nothing. That you have to try and fill up with maybe like scratch textures or battle worn kind of textures. But it came out well. I can't complain too much with how it looked. It took a bit of tweaking obviously to get the shadows right or where it's hitting. Because obviously, I mean, I'm assuming they were made out of metal. I mean, I'd hope they're not plastic. That would change the whole dynamic a little bit. <laughs> but I am going to digress just a little bit. So behind the scenes, I have been working on a few things. If you follow me on any of my social channels, you would know I've been posting the pictures of little black and white images. Now, my plan and my goal is these little black and white images at some point will become stickers. And if you've seen them, you'll also know there's like a blank little scroll on them as well. And that's for people to write in their own names. So eventually, that will be a thing. So watch the space, please. It will be a thing, I promise. It will happen. And I will let you guys know when. And there we are. So again, thank you for getting this far. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. You know the drill. And I'll leave you to these little close-up images. Bye.